Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're going to be getting started on an A1990 MacBook that's not turning on. So I could be loaded and explode on the rock hole. I fuck around and get hardcore. So the battery's unplugged, and it looks like we're taking 20 milliamps at 5.15 volts. 20 milliamps is not very good. It's supposed to be giving us about 200 milliamps, and then jump up to 20 volts, which it's not doing. GB33 G3 Hot RTC is right there, and that power line is going into the chip, and it's going to provide voltage on VN. Do we get we get zero volts on PP3 V3 RTC, but we get three volts there. So let's chase back and take a look at where PP3V3 underscore G3 hot underscore RTC comes from. All right, PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is going to come out of U6960. Let's take a look at U6960. U6960 is right here. Now, before we blame the chip for not making it, let's see if it's actually getting its enable. And its enable is going to be present on R6968. R6968 over here is going to be charger enable. MVR. If we go over here to U6960, I'm going to check and see if there's voltage on the enable. So let's find that. That's going to be over here. The resistor I need for measuring enable is going to be the second one down. And there's no enable. Now, where does that enable come from? If you look over here, R6968 is going to go to this chip, U7000. And U7000 is over here. The ISL9240. So th that chip needs to make the enable in order for this to work. Let's take a look at what that looks like on the board. Right over here, our Intersil ISL9240. So here what I'd like to do is give this chip a minor reflow. I'm just going to put the syringe for flux over it, put some flux there. And you're going to notice that right as I do that, there is an immediate crack evident on the bottom right of this chip. These are very, very fragile chips, and it's very easy for them to crack if there's any sort of drop or shock to the machine, and they do die very often. It's very common that this chip dies, whether it's the ISL9240 in this machine or the ISL9239 in the 2016 and 17 machines, as you can see from these many videos that I'm going to link to above where you can watch a board repair where the primary cause it stopped working was the Intersil chip. So this is really not an uncommon repair by any means. It's a chip that is regularly required if you want to do repairs on these machines. As you can see, there's no change. It's taking the exact same amount of power it was before, and it's stuck at 20 volts because we don't have PP3V3 underscore G3 hot, which, just as with all the older machines, the A1707s, the A1708s, the A1706s, is required for the USB-C port controller to speak to the charger and tell the charger to put out 20 volts rather than 5 volts. It's only putting out 20 volts because it's not able to communicate with the machine. Now, on the older machines, when something like this would happen, I would simply buy an ISL9239, few bucks and replace it. Even if it costs more than a few bucks, that's fine. This board goes for over twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. So that, that's a nice way to you know, save a customer over a thousand bucks for something that often was not their fault. Whereas on this machine here with the new one, the difference is that I can't buy an ISL9240, which means that this board, which cost about $1,500, is now a brick, completely and utterly useless. Now you may wonder, why can't you buy that chip? Well, what Apple does is they tell Intersil slash Renaissance, don't sell this chip to anybody but us. Don't sell this chip to any other sub-vendors. Don't sell it to Mouser. Don't sell it to DigiKey. Don't sell it to other people in China. Make sure that we're the only people that can get this chip to work on our product. What that means is that this $1,500 board is now a doorstep, thanks to Apple. Now, you may wonder, Lewis, why don't you just become an Apple-authorized repair service, Apple-authorized service provider? Then you can get access to this. Wrong. If I was an Apple authorized service provider, I would not be able to buy an ISL 9240. If I walked into an Apple store, I took every certification they had, jumped through every single hoop, I still would not be able to get that chip. This $1,500 board is now worth nothing as a result of the way that they treat independent repair centers and their customers. Would it kill them to make a chip that used to be available available again. Like, it, but if you go back to 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, the world ends because I was able to buy a charging chip. There's no argument to be made that this is for security purposes or for data security. What this chip does is it says, make a power rail that allows a charger to turn on, put 20 volts to the computer, charge the battery, and 
read how much current the battery is using. That's it. And if you go back 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, where I could buy an ISL 6258 or buy an ISL 6259 or buy an ISL 9239, did the world end? Were computers blowing up left and right? Were consumers pissed off at how much data I stole and just uploaded to Flickr account? Were they pissed off that I was jerking off to pictures of them I saw on their encrypted SSD because I had access to a chip that charges the battery? No. But that's what people want you to think. That's what the lobbyists um, want you to think five, when they speak five, at these anti-right to repair hearings. Five, what they're five, advocating five, for five, is for me to not be able to have access to a chip that costs a few dollars at a price premium so that I can make a $1,500 board not be a doorstop. This repair is going to end at this point because I don't have the ability to get an ISL 9240. Nobody's been able to source an ISL 9240. I would put a bounty on it. Somebody's able to find me an ISL 9240. There may be a you know, nice four-figure four award in it for you. But at the end of the day, regardless of what I've said, nobody's been able to source it. So this is where this repair comes to an end. And if people don't start to speak up or push back against it or say, hey, you know, I'm not going to buy your products if you do this in the future, then this is the future that we're headed towards. So I'm going to be cutting this repair short because there's absolutely nothing I could do at this point to make this work again. And since this machine has an SSD that's soldered onto the board and no longer has a lifeboat connector, and it's encrypted by the T2 chip, I also have to tell this customer that there's no way for them to get access to their data because a $5 chip that allows the battery to charge and creates a power rail that allows the charger to turn on is not made available, even if you don't want to sell to the end consumer, even if you don't want to sell to third-party repair, or even authorized repair shops or deal with the resale of chips, is it really necessary for you to go to the OEM of that chip and say, hey, I know that this is a standard charge controller. Can you change one teeny tiny piece of it so that it only works with our machine and then never sell it to anybody else ever again? Is that the future? that we want? Is this something that is necessary? Do you want to live in a world when you go to mouse or digikey.com, there's no chips there because 98% of them were just taken off the market because they got used in other people's refrigerators, toasters, and computers and that they don't want anybody being able to fix. Can you imagine a future where you go to AutoZone and all of the shelves are completely empty and you're never able to fix your own car because Chevy and Honda and Ford and Toyota and all these companies made agreements with the manufacturers of all the car parts and said, don't sell these to anybody but us. This is not necessary, and as a free market capitalist, this is something that is honestly killing free market capitalism, the concept of trying to restrict the market by having this type of chokehold on it, where you're actually telling companies that want to be able to sell these products that they cannot sell these products. Even if you dislike me, even if you hate me, even if you love Apple products, you love using them, they're great, and you think everything I do is trash, from just a pure self-interest point of view. Advocating for this type of behavior goes against your own self-interest because someday something may happen to that product a little bit out of warranty when you don't have the extra money to just buy a new one and you may actually want that to work again. Or dare I say, the most recent backup for something very important was yesterday and you added a lot of important stuff today and you need that thing to turn on again. At some point, you're going to be in a position where this is going to bother you. And what I'm advocating for is not that you like me or that you subscribe or that you enjoy what I do or that you agree with my opinions. Moving outside of that partisan us versus them, gotta make a gotcha moment crap that people so quickly fall into. Is this really a point that is worth defending? Is this really something that's worth advocating for, even if you are on the pro-Apple side? Because on the pro-repair side, even I'm able to look at certain things like a factory in China taking an Apple logo and stamping it on products that are not even remotely an Apple product and say, you know what? No, that's wrong. That's not something I'm going to defend. That's something I'm going to call out because it is, it's reasonable. It's something that the other side is saying is wrong, and I'm able to say that's something that would piss me off too. So even if you are on the pro-Apple side, can you kind of somewhat understand understand how a particular action or tactic like this might aggravate people who were on the repair side. That's not the way manufacturing, technology, or anything worked in this country for the longest time up until very recently. And it's not something that's going to change unless a large group of people say, you know what, I'm not dealing with it anymore. And what I'm suggesting is not that you like, is not that you subscribe, is not that you even agree with everything it is I have to say. But just ask, think, is this really the best way to go going forward? That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.